Changing spark plugs in a Mercedes 102 or 103 gas engine should be a piece of cake, right? Look, you've got a nice open engine bay. Uh, the plugs are easy to get to, so you know, just give me a spark plug wrench and, and a gapping tool and you should be ready to go. Well, not so fast. Over the years, I've learned that you need to be prepared when you take on this job. There are a number of supplies and tools that'll make it a lot easier. I'll start out by going through some of those and then we'll actually go through the procedure and hopefully in this video you'll, you'll learn a few tips that'll make this a lot less frustrating when you change plugs in your own car. The first challenge is to get the spark plug wires off the spark plugs and you think well all I've got to do is reach in there and pull on them. Well, not so fast, especially if they've been on there a long time. Sometimes you can grab a hold of these plugs and you can pull them off. Other times you'll get a hold of them and no matter how hard you'll yank on them, they just won't come out at all. And that's when you're going to need a special tool like this. Now I'm holding here a Matco uh, spark plug wire removal tool and it has a sharp cutter edge here and it doesn't work so well. So there's actually a very special tool that you can use to get a hold of that spark plug wire boot. Remember, if you start yanking on that thing and pulling on it hard, you can, you can pull the wire right out of the resistor. So I can reach in here like this and get a hold of the wire. A lot of times I have to use two hands to support it, but then I can, I can pull the wire out using this special tool here. The spark plug wires are off and I should be able to start pulling those plugs out, right? No, not quite right yet. If you look at this engine design, the plugs are recessed into a large hole here and that collects a lot of dirt. So before you ever pull the plugs on this type of an engine, you want to come in there and blow these recesses out. You can use compressed air, it works great, but a lot of you, if you don't have a compressor, you can also buy this can compressed air and it, it works real well to just get the dirt and dust out of these spark plug holes. Next, let's talk spark plug sockets. You can use a normal socket like this one here on an extension, and it'll work fine. But I prefer the long, deep socket that's specifically designed for these engines. And I also like the flex head ratchet, which will let me maneuver in the engine compartment much more easily. The other thing is, no matter what socket you're using, make sure it has a very good rubber insert here that actually connects on to the, the spark plug. Because when you loosen that spark plug and pull the socket out, you want the plug to come with the socket. Now I'm going to go into the engine compartment. I'll remove these six plugs. We'll put them up on the bench and take a look at them. When I remove spark plugs, I lay them out on the bench in the order in which they came out of the engine. Here's number one. And I just take a look at them before I put in new plugs. There's a couple interesting things I can show you here. Uh, for instance, look at number two. It's been leaking. This plug was not even tight, and that was confirmed when I did take it out. It was loose. So this, this was losing compression. You can see there's a, this one's running a little bit cleaner. That one's quite oily. There's a lot of crud uh, and buildup on almost all these plugs. So that's an indication that this engine's probably burning a little oil. It may have a, a valve guide seal problem. So when I put the new plugs, I'll make some notes. I'll put the new plugs in and then, you know, maybe after 5,000 miles, I'll pull a couple out and see what the new plugs are doing. And then of course the new plug to prepare that for installation, you will want to check the gap according to your particular model. Uh, they, they generally are pretty close from the factory, but you will want to check the gap on each plug before you install them. And then I always use a little bit of anti-seize compound. You don't have to use a lot. And I just lightly coat the threads. And this will make it a lot easier to get the plugs out when you go to take them out the next time. So now we're ready to install these plugs back into the engine. I will use a torque wrench, as you see here. And once I snug them down, I will torque each plug to between 15 and 20 foot-pounds. Oh shoot, it's just starting to rain. What's, what else is new in the Pacific Northwest? There's one thing I forgot to show you, and this, this is one of my favorites, is using a piece of 3 8 inch fuel hose to install these spark plugs. Remember, it's critical that you get these plugs going in straight and do not cross-thread them. It's very hard 
to shove this on an end of a socket and shove it down in that hole and really feel, I mean feel how the plug is going in. I use a hose like this, push it on to the plug, I can set this down in the hole and I can turn it very lightly with the hose and I can feel those threads start to grab and then I keep working it in. This will prevent me from ever cross threading the threads in that cylinder head. And once it's in a ways, I can just pull the hose off and then go at it with the socket. Last but not least, this is a must do. You must use some dielectric grease and coat the inside of these boots on each one of these plug wire ends. Just put a, a gob in there and rub it on that rubber part. Each one, if you don't do this, it's going to be very hard to get these ignition wires off in the future. I'll go ahead and finish doing that and plug those in and I'm done. How important are spark plugs? You can't believe this, but I've had on three different occasions, I've had 300 E's that would go down the road and just quit on their owners. And believe it or not, in all three of those cases, it was simply a matter of changing the spark plugs. One particular owner had spent hundreds of dollars replacing all of the kind of components before he came to me and I helped him discover the true problem. So I recommend that you change the plugs every 60,000 miles in these cars and you may have to do it more frequently if you have an engine that's burning oil, probably like this one. Now in another 20,000 miles, if this were my car, I would pull the plugs out and at least look at them to see how they're doing. But remember, do not neglect spark plug maintenance.